Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and install the NZXT Kraken Elite 420 RGB. I'm going to show you the setup and wiring for this all-in-one cooler, how to install it in the case, how to set it up with Intel and AMD builds, how to wire it into the system, how to control it with NZXT's CAM software. I'm also going to show you a push-pull setup, so how to install an additional 420mm single frame fan if you want to. I've got a separate review of the cooler that I'll link to in the description where I talk about the thermal performance of it. But in this video, I'm going to stick to the setup and installation of it. Now, it is fairly straightforward, fortunately, and it's pretty easy to do. This comes with pre-applied thermal paste with all the cabling that you need and the bracketing for both Intel and AMD setups. And you can see that all laid out here, as well as a single frame fan, which is really easy to install because it has a connector that plugs directly into the breakout cable that's built for this cooler. And as you can see, the wiring of it's going to be easy and also the installation on the radiator is easy. You've got a number of other parts with clearly labeled bags, which will be very helpful. For this build, I'm using the standoffs for a LGA1700 socket motherboard and an AMD AM5 socket. So I'm going to show you how to do both of those in a second. So we'll get to those steps and the wiring and setup for it to make it really clear for you so you know what you're doing during your build process. But first with the setup of the fans on the radiator, I'm installing them face down into the case because I'm going to use this as an exhaust radiator, pulling air through the radiator and pushing out of the top of the case. You then use four of the long radiator screws that are included in the box to secure it to the radiator. Notice the way I've installed it when the fan cable is coming out on one side. This you need to bear in mind depending on how you install the rad in the case. So with the fans installed on there, then we're going to look at the wiring logic of the rest of it. Now this is really simplified because you have a breakout cable that plugs into the radiator. So nothing comes out of the pump, it's all done through the radiator and then the wiring runs through the system itself, which is really straightforward. So there's this connector that plugs in on the edge here. Now it is for quite a fat cable, which becomes difficult to manage later on, but it does include a lot of different connectors in there, which you can see here that I've laid out for you. We've got different cables for the USB connection to the motherboard, fan connector, which connects up to the fans on the radiator, CPU fan header that goes to the motherboard, and then SATA power to the power supply unit. So essentially the fans that you've connected up on the radiator then plug into this breakout cable so that they can then be controlled by NZXT's CAM software later on once you've got that set up and installed. And that's also then wired into the AIO pump header or CPU fan header on the motherboard. I'd recommend using CPU fan because you'll find your BIOS doesn't complain about not recognizing the CPU fan speed if you use that port you'll see that the cable only has three pins. The port has four, but don't worry, you can still install that there. Then you have a USB connection, which runs to the bottom middle of the motherboard. You should find you have two spare ports here. So you just plug one in there and plug that cable in and that'll be sorted out. On a rear connect motherboard, that'll plug it in at the rear, as you can see down the bottom here. So if you've got a BTF motherboard or a stealth board, it'll plug in down the bottom. But you need to make sure you've got a port free for this so that the screen can be controlled. Then you need a SATA power cable, and this is important too to make sure that it's properly powered. This is the same cable you use for SSDs and hard disk drives. You'll find these power cables supplied with your power supply unit. They plug into the SATA and PATA ports, in this case on the Corsair's RM shift power supply. Type 5 connector plugs into one of those ports. And then you have a cable with multiple connectors on it and you need to find a spare one of those to plug into this power cable that comes from uh, the radiator through that breakout cable that will ensure the fans and the entire system is powered properly it can only be plugged in one way it's worth noting and now we're going to get on with looking at the motherboard prep so i'm going to demonstrate the logic for lga 1700 socket motherboards but this will also apply to 1851 socket you can see that the bags are labeled for 1851 1700 socket standoffs and this is the back plate and standoff setup that you're going to need the back plate i'd recommend applying to the motherboard before you install it in the case it makes life easier there's a little sticky back plastic cover that you need to peel off there to expose some 3m stickiness on the underside of that so it'll then secure to the back of the motherboard. You'll want to adjust the little standoffs, pushing them in and out to the edges 
of the back plate so they'll line up with the holes on the back of the motherboard to install it. This back plate is used for all the Intel setups so you just need to make sure you line it up with the right holes on your motherboard. I'm using a Z690 motherboard here but it'll work with 790 and 890 sockets as well. Then on the other side you will use your standoffs, so the LGA1700 socket standoffs in this instance to secure into those standoffs that we run through there. So you just screw those into the holes in the four corners surrounding your CPU so you'll then be able to seat the cooler down over the top. It's worth noting that the cooler bracketing is set up specifically for these out of the box. So it's actually set up with Intel bracketing. If you want to use an AMD setup, you'll have to do some changes to it. Then once the motherboard's installed in the case, you'd seat the cooler down over the top and use these silver thumb screws to secure it from corner to corner around the edges in all four corners, securing it down nicely. And then for AM5 socket prep, things are a little bit different. We have to, first of all, take a look at what's included. So you'll see that there's a bag here with AM5, AM4 standoffs. These are thicker on one end than the other. It's very difficult to see, but they're basically slightly thicker on the threading on one end. And that's the end that needs to go into the motherboard. But first of all, you need to remove the pre-installed standoffs and bracketing on the motherboard itself. So there's two screws on each of these black plastic clips or the white ones you'll see later on that you first of all need to unscrew and remove. And it's the same on most motherboards. You'll find that that's the setup there. Take those out of the way and then put the little standoffs in place instead. So the fat end, as a reminder, screws into the port on the motherboard. And do make sure you use that one because if you use the other end by accident, you'll find that this is much looser than it should be. And this causes quite a problem because essentially you just then got a loose cooler and then you won't get as good cooling out of it. In my build, I'm aiming to put the tubes from the radiator on the left hand side. I've been told by a viewer that they hate that and it should be on the right hand side. They prefer it that way around. So I want to show you a couple of things. First of all, you can see it's a little bit difficult to get that in. So putting it on the right might be a better option. You might prefer it. But one thing to bear in mind is how you've mounted the fans there because you can see the fan cable is now on the wrong side if you do that. So you'd have to mount the fans the other way so the cable would run to the weir. But that's how it would look like that. Might look okay. I just didn't want to block the front fans. Obviously, this is in a very specific case as well. I'm using NZXT H9 Flow RGB Plus here where there's a rear 120 millimeter fan that you can actually adjust the positioning of moving it downwards. You might find that you have to remove the rear fan in your case or maybe you can't use a fan at all or that you end up with the tubes on the right because you don't want the tubes to interfere with that back fan. You can see installing it here is actually touching up against that fan which is not necessarily ideal. However, it didn't interfere with the airflow there so it's not a problem in that regard. So just work out what's best for you in terms of positioning. Now to secure it to the top, we'll use the small screws and washers that are included with the all-in-one cooler. They were secure into multiple points across the top, as you can see. You line it up there, and then you're screwing those in so it's fully secured. There's a lot of them to do, so I'm skipping the process for that. But then you install those, and then we've got to run the cables through to the rear. So you'll notice there are some holes at the top that we can run the cables through, and I'm using the thin cable from the fan to run that through first of all, because you want to hide that away at the back. Obviously, it's going to plug into the breakout cable, as I showed you. The breakout cable is a little bit more problematic because it is quite chunky. Now, you can run this either behind the tubes or in front of that rear one, which is what I've done. It's not as easy to make this look neat, unfortunately, because it is quite a beast. But you can push it back through there and try and hide the majority of it away at the rear so it just looks a bit nicer. Now, for installing the pump down over the CPU, first of all, we need to remove the plastic cap. And then take this standard bracketing off because that's for Intel socket CPUs. And then instead of that, we're going to slot in the AMD ones, which are these straight brackets that you can see included here. So they slot in from the bottom, the top. You see you've got the tubes at the bottom of the pump here for reference. And then you just slot that into place so that those are secured. And then we're going to pop those down over the standoffs that we installed originally. You line these up with that carefully. What you want to do is make sure you put that in there carefully and don't move it around too much once you put it down in place because you don't want to smear the pre-implied thermal paste all over the place and ruin it. Put your thumb screws over the standoffs and tighten those up. Do this by hand to start with. 
go corner to corner so it's nice and secured into those four corners. And then I'd recommend using a screwdriver basically to tighten them up fully so that they turn until they won't turn any further, but don't like force it. Don't go overly hard with it, trying to tighten as much as possible. You just want to make sure they don't move and so that they're fully secured there. And then you'll see that set up. Nice thing about this cooler is there's nothing coming out of the pump itself, so there's no additional cables there to worry about. And then you just need to adjust the tubes and the positioning of them. But you can see it just hangs over that rear fan a little bit. Maybe it's not perfect that way, but that's up to you entirely. Then at the rear, we'll plug in the cable from the breakout cable and the one from the fan, connect those together. And then don't forget the CPU fan connection. That plugs in the top left of the motherboard on a rear connect motherboard. And then you're basically just going to bundle those cables together and put them under the Velcro tie so they're out of the way. And then the other additional connections that you'd have would run to the bottom of the case. So one is the USB connection, which connects up to the port. This is essential so you can control the display on the all-in-one cooler. We've got a spare port down here next to the one we plugged in from the fan controller. Plug that in, and then you have the SATA connection. So this is the same connector you'd use for your SSDs and hard disk drives. And we've got a cable here with multiple connectors on it. So you just plug that in there and then that's power. That'll ensure that the display works and the pump works and everything's getting its power. And then I just did a test boot to make sure everything was turning on properly. You see all the fans are running. Everything will start as white. You have to download NZXT's CAM software to get it working in other colors. Now I mentioned that I wanted to show you how to do a push-pull setup. So here you can see it with two 420 millimeter single frame fans on the radiator instead of just one. This is obviously a bit crazy, but if you wanted to do it, you can, and I'm going to show you how. It's actually really easy to do. Obviously, it's an additional purchase. You need to purchase one of these 420 millimeter single frame fans, and we're just going to add it to the radiator. Make sure it's facing the same direction as the fans that are already on the rad, so uh, fan blades facing down towards the radiator in this instance. And then you're going to basically put it onto the top of the case. Now you have to secure things differently. So I've taken the small screws off the radiator to remove it from the case and then use the long radiator screws that come with the all-in-one cooler. They pass through the case, through the fan and into the rad. So four screws instead of all the other little screws that we were using before go through that top fan that we put in there and secure it in place there. Once that's done, we then have an additional cable running from the additional single frame fan to the back that we need to plug in somewhere. Obviously, you can't plug it into the breakout cable. But what you can do is connect it up to the NZXT control hub. And I'd recommend this as an option, especially if you're using NZXT fans throughout the rest of your build. The control hub is purchasable separately or is included with the H9 Flow RGB Plus case that I'm using. And it has multiple ports on it uses the same logic as the fans on the radiator in that it has a flat connector. There's also adapters included with them that allow you to plug into fan and RGB connectors as an alternative, so you could, in theory, connect up the additional fan to the motherboard if you prefer. But if you're using NZXT fans, then this is logical. I've got a separate wiring guide on wiring these single frame fans that I'll link to in the description that will hopefully help if you find this confusing at all or if you want some additional guidance. But basically the single frame fans plug into this controller fairly easily or use the adapters to connect to the motherboard. And if you're going to do that, I'd recommend using the CPU fan header for the additional single frame fans and use the AIO pump header for the pump instead. But you can see you can plug loads of groups of fans into this. Now plug the additional fans into the controller and remember the port that you plugged them into because that will be handy later on when you're using NZXT's CAM software. The controller then needs PCIe power, that's the same power cable you use for your graphics cards, and it requires the 8-pin power connector, so the 6- and 2-pin connectors need to be pushed together and needs to be inserted into this power connector. This is important because it powers the fans and the RGB using this hub, so it needs that power. And then you also need a USB connection to the motherboard so you can control the RGB lighting. So now we'll be using two USB connections, one for the fan controller and one for the AIO as well. Once your PC is fully set up, I'd recommend downloading and installing NZXT's CAM software. Once you're in there, you go into the cooling section and you can choose from various different cooling profiles. As default is set to silent. If you click on the drop down though, you can choose fixed, 
performance or custom modes, and then you can set it to respond to the CPU or liquid temperature inside the cooler. Note that the fans on the radiator you can also set for the same logic and you can adjust the custom curve, for example, and tweak if you want to, but the silent profile is pretty decent. This is why I said it was important to remember which fan connector you have for the additional fans if you're doing push-pull though, because then you can set them to respond to the same temperature and the same sensor, whether that's the CPU or the liquid temperature, and you can set the other fans to respond to GPU temperature. Then in the lighting section, if you go in there, you can adjust various other things. On the drop down for the pump, for example, you can go in there and you can set it to different modes in single infographic, dual infographic, triple infographic. Choose what readouts are going to be on there. Select whether you want the logo to show. Get different visualizations for the RGB around the outside. Change the various different colors and effects in there. There's lots of different options in here. You'll also notice there's an option to rotate the display. So if you installed the pump with the tubes in a different position on the pump itself, you can rotate the display around as an option from there. You can also upload your own GIFs or choose from GIFs that are in the system so that you can easily apply those really quickly as well. And there's lots of different options in here to choose from. I personally like the dual or triple infographic one because you can use this to show your GPU temperature and the CPU temperature at a glance and maybe also the load of certain things, how much pressure one of your parts is under, for example. It's really handy to have this display and be able to see how your system is doing really easily and quickly. So that's one of the nice things. Play around with this, work out what's best for you. You can also choose a carousel where it'll flick between various different ones, for example. And there's lots of different options to choose from, which is really nice. And one of the cool features of this all-in-one cooler. Now, in the lighting section, you can also choose from various different lighting effects. So you can select from the drop down here and get lighting effects that apply to all the NZXT fans that are connected to an NZXT controller or via the breakout cables, so the ones that are on the radiator and your pump as well, and the additional ones that we've added as push-pull and any case fans. So it depends how you've got your system set up. But as standard, obviously, if you're just installing the cooler, it'll be with the fans and the pump, and then you can control the lighting here, and then you can see the sync options as well. Hopefully I've given you some good insights into how to set up this Kraken cooler and connect it up in the case. I've got separate guides that I'll link to in the description, including a build guide for the H9 Flow RGB Plus and more. But this has been the Provoke Brawn. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.